I'd like to go back to 1813. And there was a young seminarian in France who was dismissed from the seminary because he looked too ordinary. He was skinny, he was shy, he came from a lower mid-class family, and perhaps worse, he couldn't pass his Latin exam. It's not you, Andy, okay? They said that he didn't measure up to what a priest should be. And they released him. And he begged. He begged and finally he got a second chance. And he studied hard and passed his classes. He got ordained. And for the next 44 years of his life, he was a pastor of a small parish in the mountains of France called Ars. And it was there that the pastor of Ars worked miracles, daily hearing confessions from 12 to 14 hours a day. And people emptied their souls to him and to God. And there was this huge conversion. And many people came to him for spiritual direction and guidance that it caused such, such problems that the French government had to put a train station in that village. And today, St. John Marie Vianney is the patron saint of all priests throughout the world. And it's such a great story. And it was almost a missed moment. The eyes of the faculty at the seminary couldn't see him fitting what a priest should be. We had just the opposite at Christ the King. We used to get candidates from another country, I won't say which, but we border it. And they would send us their guys that needed that extra touch to get them through the seminary. Because there was that love of God in them that needed to be pushed. My dear friends, sometimes we get too focused upon things that are not necessarily the most important aspects of life and especially those of the values of the kingdom. Similarly, something happened in today's gospel. Jesus got up to preach in his native town of Nazareth, and the people say, you're too ordinary. You live down the street. We know Mary and we know Joseph. And how can you preach and work these miracles? Father Leon said he was probably their paper boy. All right. See, I did listen to his homily. You don't know the things to say or ask the same things that we think God would tell us to do. So they're having this problem with Jesus that he doesn't fit the mold of those that God has sent us. My dear friends, these neighbors missed out an opportunity for more teachings and more miracles to take place and a deeper intimacy with the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, the story of St. John Vianney and of our Lord in today's gospel reminds us that God gives us eyes to see with faith. And yet he also asks us to see 
with those eyes of faith. Because sometimes in life, it's easy to see what we want to see or to say God should do this and we want God to do that. And yet, my friends, God asks us to have an open heart, open eyes, an open heart. Because of the great joys in life that don't come from what I personally want, but from what that person of God wants for me. And all of us, God opens doors that we thought were locked. God heals wounds that we thought that would never be healed. And God answers questions that we have deep in our hearts. Tough days, times of struggle, these difficult moments of resizing and refiguring with God's grace can turn into moments of joy and grace and new opportunities and blessings for each of us. Often we say in life, I want to go for the, go the bronze. But God says to you and to me, I'll help you to go for the gold. How often in our lives we say, I'll give it a try. And God says, with my grace, it'll be two or three times of trying. And then you'll double your blessings. My dear brothers and sisters, our gospel speaks to all of us in the midst of the busyness of our daily lives, in the midst of the struggles and the storms, in the difficulties of life, in our church, in our country, in our world, in our families. And especially if we acknowledge those grace moments that come, that we can clearly see with the eyes of faith. And what do we see? That our God, our God has a profound love for us. And that God's grace is more powerful than anything else. And with God's grace, all things are possible. I pray that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened so that we will know what is the hope of all of our callings and what is surpassing greatness is his power to each of us who believe. May you and I, with this confidence, seek that goodness and profound love of God as we always see with those eyes of faith. May we walk always by faith and not by sight. And it's that same Jesus that is present with each of us today. Let's pray for an increase of faith in our diocese, an openness to the call of priesthood, like Andy today looking to live out that dream, to religious life, to good and healthy and faithful marriages, and more importantly, for all of us to embrace a strong identity as disciples of Christ. So that you and I can be witnesses to the world that we have been touched by God's love. And that that Holy Spirit, through the time of transition, may breathe new life into our old bones and lead us into that vision of Christ. 
I was amazed by the group of the 150 students we had here from Denver over the week. They were a witness of living out the faith. And they were going to OLV in Lackawanna. They didn't take the bus, they walked to be a witness and a sign in our world of young people making a commitment to live the gospel message. Let's pray that that life, that excitement, may imbue our diocese once more to live out our call.